Hi, my name is Alan Richardson and I want to talk about absolutes. Absolutes in language and how they apply to software testing. So I should give you some examples. Uh, we must not automate through the GUI. All automating should be done first through the API. Do not use Cucumber for automated GUI testing. And the keywords are always, do not, never, must, should. I have some sympathy for all of those examples. I just wouldn't phrase them as absolutes. There are times when automating through the API works great. Times when automating through the GUI works great. There are so many contextual factors that go into success. But I mean, I haven't always thought like this. I used to be very strong on absolutes. This is a good tool. This is a bad tool. This is a good approach. Always do this. This is a bad approach. Never, never do this. I, mean, I try not to do that anymore. But sometimes the absolutes slip into how I talk because it's hard to remove this from our heads and how we communicate. But I try. So I've come to view testing and by extension, testers as the people on the project who need to remain flexible in their opinions and beliefs, right? We can absolutely hold on to evidence. I have evidence that I could not log in with this username and this password. But we know that that was contextual. At this particular point in time with this specific version of this software, using this specific version of the browser, I could not log in with this username and password. In fact, I might not even say that I could not log in. I'll say that I got this error message saying I could not log in. Perhaps I did log in. Perhaps the system lied to me. I have to report the evidence, right? And we identify the caveats and the context to help stop us overgeneralizing from that evidence into an absolute statement that we don't really have the evidence for. Because context helps us test. It's one of the mindsets that helps us generate new conditions to try for testing. I don't have any evidence that this problem exists with this browser, so let me try in that browser. I don't have any evidence that this problem happens at different times. Perhaps the timing was important, right? The knowledge of what we don't know, the gaps in our evidence, what our context actually spans, drives us to seek out new evidence. Unless we are absolute, unless we are certain. Because if we are absolutely certain, then we won't seek out new evidence. There's no need to. We are certain. And worse, we might reject evidence because of our belief. I don't think this happens as much when we're testing software. There's a risk we might not notice something, but I don't think we reject evidence. But this does happen with human systems because we have biases. Certification is bad. Only automate through the API. These are biases. I'm biased against certification. I'm biased towards explicit weight rather than implicit synchronization. But because it's a bias, it's not an absolute. I can understand why some people see value in certification, see value in implicit weights and test scripts and tools I don't like. So I try not to hold those as absolutes, but it can be hard. I try not to say, no, don't do that. Never do that. That bad. You bad. I try not to do that because absolutes often cause more problems than anything else. They block dialogue. They cause arguments. Now, we as testers have the job of exploring certainty, revealing its limits. When the requirement says um, the system must not allow the user to create passwords with less than six characters, do we stop at five characters? Having seen that five characters doesn't work and I get an error message, do I stop testing that requirement? Right? I've got evidence. I've seen that it does not allow me to create the password with less than six characters. Right? No, because we know we don't have enough evidence to cover the full scope. We would never stop there. We would try with no characters, with spaces. We'd try and add a null. There's a whole bunch of things we would try that fall under that category, except because I've just described an absolute. I said we would never do that. One thing to do with absolutes is to try and counter them. When might I do that? When might I deem it acceptable to try with just five characters and move on? Perhaps I tested this area before. Perhaps I tested it yesterday really thoroughly. And there was a new release, so I'm just giving it a quick check, but I know nothing changed in that area. Perhaps that would be a reason not to do this. 
right? We can think of circumstances where the absolute would not apply. That's part of our job, right? This is part, this is part of the job that very few other people on the team will do. So I think it's a useful exercise to explore your beliefs. So write down as many things as you believe in testing as absolutes. Write down all your absolutes. Never write test scripts. Never read a defect without a screenshot. Whatever, whatever your absolute is, write down your absolutes. And then find as many contextual variations for that absolute. When would we not do that? Never write test scripts. Um, except when the customer says we must and is paying us a lot of money to do it and we've told them it will take longer, but they're happy with that, right? This helps when you encounter someone else's belief online or face-to-face. -face. So when they give you an absolute, instead of leaping to no, wrong, right, you can start to explore the context that sits around that and understand their why, understand their context. So most of the beliefs we have are actually biases. So we want to convert our beliefs into biases. And you might have good reasons for holding that bias. And it can be a really useful exercise to identify what they are. So for each of the beliefs you wrote down, write down as many of the because statements as you can. Write down the reasons. Never write test scripts because they take more time to write than actually test. Um, some of those because statements might be from someone else. They might be calls to authority. You believe it because a guru told you it was true, so you repeat it. They might be perfectly valid, but you might not have enough evidence to justify them. So perhaps you need to explore it more. Some of those because statements lead back to experiences that we had where it all went wrong. And we have to be careful that we didn't overgeneralize from a bad experience. Perhaps someone else can make it work. Perhaps we just couldn't. So sometimes we have biases because we have skills and experience that other people don't have. If we impose our bias on others as an absolute, we might be setting them up to fail. And the reason I'm pointing this out is that I see so much absolute communication online and then people embracing that absolute as gospel. And especially in testing, we cannot afford to do that. Right? We have to be able to think critically to explore absolutes and find their limits, to come up with creative objections and alternatives, even if they don't turn out to be valid or, or they seem unrealistic or silly, right? We explore options. Right, my name's Alan Richardson. You can find me at eviltester.com. Thank you very much for listening. Explore everything and test well.